Welcome to Heading West, where you're bringing to the frontier of capital markets and Web3. In Episode 7 of Heading West, we'll be discussing the future of Web3 peer-to-peer wallet communication with MGOs, the CEO of Wallet Chat, which is a Web3 native experience where users, users enjoy the benefits of connecting and chatting with others directly using their wallet. So MGOs, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Of course. So to kick things off, MGOs, I'd love to hear about what Wallet Chat is at the core level and if you can provide the viewers and listeners with an elevator pitch so they can get a brief understanding. Absolutely. So I guess to give a little bit of a context, so I would say that community and social interaction is really the key part of Web3 experience. Um, but there is a big issue with this, which is basically that the tools, the tools that we use like Telegram, Discord and Twitter, they are completely disconnected from your current web free identity, which lives inside of your wallet instead. And what does this mean? Well, A, this means a terrible user experience of switching between multiple platforms. And it also poses serious security threats of having to go to external websites uh, like Collabland and sign links with your wallet uh, every time you want to connect to a web free identity. So that's, that's where we are at right now. And what we have built at WalletChat to address this is basically a rich communication layer, which is web-free native and connected to your existing wallet. And at current, WalletChat supports direct messages, uh, group messages, uh, NFT gated chats, and pops. And the format in which it is available is a web app a browser extension, and now also an API and a widget, which can be easily integrated into into other dApps and experiences. It's really interesting what you guys are building. I think it's going to be a huge game changer, especially for the Web3 world and especially relating to NFTs. So I'm excited to dive in a bit further. So MGOs, what drew you to Web3 and what caused you to build Wallet Chat? Great question. So I would say it's a mix of things. Um, first of all, I'm definitely a strong believer in the values of um, individual freedom and empowerment. And I think this space is really just the best personification of, of those values right now. Um, and I would say, yeah, just building out systems that bring this kind of world um, closer to fruition is for me personally, just one of the most important things that I feel I can do with my time. Um, and, and other than that, just, yeah, to be frank, it's, it's it's really one of the most exciting and vibrant and and wonderfully weird spaces um, to be in, that's for sure. I definitely I definitely uh, can agree with that. So uh, thank you again for what you're doing and uh, pushing the space further along. So I'm curious too, from my viewpoint, it's always interesting to learn about when founders and builders first learned about crypto and kind of where they are now. So when did you first hear or learn about crypto? And then what was the timeline like to get where you are today? I've, I've been observing the space since 2014. Uh, I kind of stumbled upon it by, by accident. Um, back then, there was no Ethereum, no smart contracts. It was all about Bitcoin and the various Bitcoin killers that were going to revolutionize payments. Um, and, and it was kind of interesting enough for me to observe, but I was busy enough uh, yeah, doing something else in Web2. Um, and eventually I, I ended up joining the space full time um, about two years ago. Fully an OG, been here since 2014. That's incredible. Is this your first startup or have you been a founder before? Um, it's not the first one. So I've been in startups for about, I think it's about six years now. Um, so most of that was in Web2. Um, I was an early employee of... Uh, of one startup, which actually did very well. Uh, it grew through multiple rounds of funding, uh, expanded internationally, um, and did pretty well. Um, and then I left that eventually after about four years. And I was part of some other ventures. Which I would say they didn't quite hit the home run in the same way. Um, I think, yeah, like what, one thing I've learned from all of this is that um, being in the right space at the right time and and working on the right problem is is really just one of the most important things to do. Um, and yeah, I think just just building social tooling in Web three at the moment it's um, it definitely feels like it's um, it's ticking those boxes. That's super important. Yeah, especially building a company or being a founder, everything does need to align right across a multitude of verticals. So I can definitely agree with you there. And then, so how has it been being a founder in the current macro conditions? Obviously, there's 
The world's been a pretty crazy place lately. I'm curious how it's been, whether it be raising, building, et cetera, finding employees. How has that been with the current market conditions? Uh, oh, boy. <laughs> it's, it's, it's both good and bad, that's for sure. Um, I think on one hand, you know, had we, had we started six months earlier with fundraising, it would have been just so, so much easier to raise, say, five mil at a really good valuation with, like, very few questions asked. Um, but like on, on the other hand, um, I think had we done that, we might have also been very distracted by all the noise that has been going on in the space at that time. And we would have probably been tempted to, to spend a lot of money on, on things like flashy marketing and, and other initiatives, which, which might pay off sometimes, but, um, maybe I think often they don't lead to, to the most sustainable traction. So I, I would say, yeah, given that like the benefit of the current market is really that we're still able to build, uh, we are really forced to be much, much more focused and disciplined and, and really just creative with our time and money. Uh, and it's, yeah, like it, it times it definitely makes it feel difficult, but I think in the long run, like this, this mix can lead to a, a really good product. Yeah, most definitely. I think you brought up some key points too, and it's always important to look at the bright side of things and how the current market conditions are helping propel your business and your company. How much have you guys raised so far? Um, so so far, actually, we haven't raised anything. We have been okay. Prospect. Good for um, you guys. So, is Wallet Chat a one-man team? And um, if not, are you guys looking to expand anytime soon? Or is there any opportunities for any listeners to join the team as well? Um, so definitely not a one-man team. Uh, <laughs> Like Rome wasn't built in a day and wasn't built by one man. Um, and this is no exception. So uh, our current setup, we're two co-founders. So it's myself and our CTO, whose name is Kevin. And and other than that, we, we've worked with several other people um, so far, which um, which have been involved across, across different roles, uh, spanning front-end, UI, um, community marketing. Um, and yeah, to your second question, we're definitely, definitely always looking for more people that, um, that are aligned on the vision, are excited by the idea and, um, and are willing to contribute. So if, uh, if that's you definitely get in touch via Twitter or Discord, I think we will share the links later on. There we go. We most definitely will. And, uh, thank you for sharing the opportunity. I'm sure some people would love to learn how they can get involved. So in regards to, in regards to web two communications, what are some of the core problems or, um, you know, difficulties you see in web two and how do you see those evolving and getting better in web three? Sure. So I think I've partly outlined the problem, uh, in your first question already, but mm -hmm. just to sum it up, I think the main problem is just the disconnect between your web two and web three identity. And once we fix that, um, then I think it's just going to be a really, really powerful thing that's going to unlock a lot of, a lot of native web free functionality, um, that we just don't have, uh, or even can't really conceive of at the moment. Yes, exactly. And that's the exciting part, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. So I know Wa wallet chat is currently focusing on the NFT marketing segment is wallet chat down the road, looking about expanding, um, you know, what you guys are building other segments of web three or just solely focusing on NFTs mainly. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Great question. So. Definitely, we're not going to stop at NFTs only. Um, I think the way we see it is we have started in the NFT crowd because it's one of the, I would say, probably one of the most engaged and active audiences in the space. And, and also their pain point with, with user experience and security is, is probably the highest out there at the moment. Um, so, so that's our starting point, but it definitely doesn't stop there in terms of what we are looking into already. So we're talking to some other communities um, and other dApps uh, that range from trading, games, uh, self-custody wallets, and some others. And like the common denominator between all of these is that they they understand the need and they're looking to integrate some uh, web-free native messaging functionality. Um, so that's... That's, that's, that's going to become the expanded target very soon. I, I just want to, yeah, make a little plug here. If, if you are running or building Please one do. of those dApps and you, yeah, and you, you also see the opportunity to, to integrate, um, a messaging layer, which is web free native to, you know, either improve your experience or engagement of your users, then definitely 
we would we would just love to hear from you. Most definitely. Yeah, I think what you guys are building too is great just because it's so universal. And I think it was a good starting point with the NFT community as they're wild and they're very active across Web3 and Twitter especially. So currently right now, what are some of the current marketplaces you guys are integrated with? And what are some of the current marketplaces you guys are looking to expand into? I, I wish I could name names, but I think <laughs> for most of them, I, I can't okay do it at the can. moment. <laughs> yeah, Got it. but uh, what, what, what I'm going to say is um, I, I can definitely promise there are some um, that we are talking to uh, that you, you would have definitely have heard of. Um, and yeah, if you, if you follow us on Twitter and Discord, we will be, I think, making some announcements soon. Um, like if you scroll down, we, we have already made some announcements earlier. So just stay tuned in there. There we go. Got to keep them waiting. Keep them on their toes. I love it. And then is wallet chat currently platform agnostic or will you guys be in the future? Um, so the short answer is yes, we are. Um, at the moment, you can already sign in with any self-custodial wallet on any EVM compatible chain uh, using Wallet Connect. Um, we are also actively working on supporting Solana and other types of wallets at the moment. So once again, uh, just do stay tuned. Um, I would say I would say the long-term vision is really that it it shouldn't matter whether you are on Ethereum or Avalanche or even Bitcoin, why not, right? Uh, you should just be able to message any other wallet on any other chain. Like, like that, that's what Web3 and composability is, is all about, right? Definitely. Yeah, I think crypto will become you know, where it's supposed to be when eventually people don't realize what chain they're on or network. So I definitely agree there. What is the main benefit of using wallet chat? So actually, the funny thing is that the more people we talk to, like the more use cases we uncover that uh, <laughs> we haven't even thought about. So that's, that's nice to see. Um, and I, I guess I will just mention some, some of the most common examples right now. Um, so let's say I'm browsing an NFT on OpenSea and I want to trade. Well, the question is, how do I message the owner without knowing their identity? Uh, very impossible to do at the moment. Uh, so that's one. Or how can I subscribe to updates from, from my favorite NFT creator that I have purchased from um, without having to connect my Web2 identity? Um, or another one very common is just, hey, how can I join my favorite NFT gated community um, without doing what I kind of just mentioned, you know, signing some external links uh, with my wallet each time and really exposing myself to to the risk of uh, being fished and losing everything. Um, and also landing in Discord where I get flooded with uh, 500 million channels with notifications. So, <laughs> so, so, so those are some of the very common um, things we are, we're trying to solve. It makes perfect sense. I definitely think there's a huge market and you guys are definitely building in the right space. And then I know you guys said you guys are bootstrapped currently, but are you guys looking to raise in the near term whatsoever? Um, yes, we are. So. Correct. We have been boosted from the beginning. Uh, we are kind of lucky to have the luxury of uh, being able to remain bootstrapped. But at the same time, um, I, I think despite the bear market, it's actually a, a great time now to um, to kind of double down because we are seeing more and more demand and more and more traction. So yeah, in order to turbocharge our growth, uh, we we do want to raise some money. Um, we, we haven't closed yet. We are in conversations at the moment. Uh, our seed round is ongoing. So yeah, if, if you're an experienced investor, um, that's, that's bullish on this space that's into, into web free social web free communications, then, um, yeah, once again, absolutely get in touch on Twitter. That would be great. There we go, everyone. There's a great opportunity for any investors listening. And then I did see you guys currently have an API that can be integrated within dApps, how we previously touched on, and DAOs. I'm curious how you see that evolving, and how do you see DAOs um, mainly kind of utilizing the wallet chat feature? Uh, oh, yes, absolutely. So we do have an API, which is live. Um, at the moment, we do have a handful of partners uh, that are building on top of it. These, these range from some NFT marketplaces to some um, 
whatever I would call them, fun collectible websites. Yeah, you will see some of those soon. Other than that, um, we have also built a React widget, which you can just uh, super easily plug into your website uh, if you really want a fast and a no-code solution that's just ready to go. This has been one of the one of the most commonly requested features. So we're releasing that in the next couple of weeks. If you are if you're a community that DAO interested in using that, um, give us a shout. That's great to hear. Yeah, it's definitely important how you guys are listening to the community and kind of building features that your customers and people within the communities are asking for. Wallet chat, for example, if I had my own DAO or my own DAP, could you or could users white label wallet chat if they wanted to? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely, they can. Very neat. Um, so... So, so there's a few things you can do, you know, with the API, you can pretty much build your fully custom interface on top of this, if that's what you would like. Um, and if you don't want to go into the effort of doing all of that, then with our widget very soon, that's also going to be customizable based on some very basic brand guidelines. Um, so yeah, whatever you prefer really. Most definitely. And that's huge. I think that's super exciting. Um, white labeling is incredible, in my opinion. I think it's really valuable when you can really take an amazing product or service and integrate that with your own company or your mission and what you're building. So I'm curious, Emgos, what has been one of your biggest challenges so far building Wallet Chat? Oh, oh boy. <laughs> so <laughs> it's we're like we, we're an early stage startup and we're also in the web free space. So I, I feel like there's just challenges coming at us every day. Definitely. Uh, just, just not going to lie about that. And, you know, these are things like just overall market sentiment or just figuring out what the heck are the right battles to focus on or, or just finding the right people to join the team. Um, it's, it's just so competitive at the moment across all those fronts. Um, but, but, you know, like at, at the same time, at least for me personally, and I think for, for the rest of the team as well, like it, it's, it's these challenges that just makes it, just, just make it so much fun at the end of the day. I mean, in my opinion, it's interesting too. I think crypto is still so new as a lot of us know, but some people are so in the space and becomes, it's become so big that people think everything should work flawlessly, seamlessly. And when, you know, some layer ones, dabs, DAOs, things don't work 100% to a T, you know, people go ballistic and they freak out, you know, this technology is so new. So there should be problems, there should be obstacles, and that's what's going to make the tech overall better. And this may be a hard one, but how do you see the NFT market evolving over the next few years? I'm curious on your opinion. Um, yes, you're definitely right. Like, I feel this is the million dollar question, really. Um, my, like, my personal feeling about this is um, that just the crypto markets, they they kind of have a way of completely disregarding whatever everybody expects and just throwing completely with curveballs at us. Um, for example, in the last I don't know, six to 12 months, when everybody expected uh, that NFT gaming is going to be the thing that uh, finally brings NFTs and crypto to the mainstream and results in this app only you know, trend, uh, well, what did we get instead? We got uh, a pretty bad uh, winter and and we got goblins as the only thing that's uh, <laughs> that, that kind of brought some innovation. So Exactly. That's too funny. So, yeah. So, so, so th 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 things work like this. But yeah, like, 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 like that said, my personal view is that ju just the space is, is just going to evolve so much over the next one or two years. I think whatever is, um, is the main narrative right now, it's... Uh, there's going to be something else that's going to be driving the space and we're just going to keep our, we just got to keep our uh, like eyes and ears open for that because, because like all, all in all, we have really just scratched the surface of the NFT space. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's going to be, but yeah. there's going to be so much more. That makes perfect sense. I feel like a lot of projects have only scratched the surface and I think it's a really interesting point. There's always going to be a new narrative. And I think me, yourself and all the listeners are curious about what that new narrative is going to be, but hopefully the trajectory will be a little bit different in around one to two years for the overall market. And then to wrap things up, MGOs, if you had one piece of advice to give to another founder building in Web3 or capital markets, what would that be? Uh, right. I have got a lot of advice, but I think like the one or two main things would be if you are seriously building for the long term and for adoption, uh, which I hope you are, because we are for sure, um, then like, first of all, you should just uh, 
forget about looking at what everybody else is building, forget about the hype and forget about the noise. And I think the best idea is to just start from, from your own, your own perspective. So what's the problem? What's a problem that I'm facing in the space right now? How can I solve it? What do I believe about the space? Uh, how is it going to look in the future? And how is that solution going to fit in there? And once you have built some kind of conviction about that, then really just, just start building, just start building and talking to users and validating and, um, and you know, don't, don't waste time like spending six or 12 months, uh, writing a white paper and designing something that's perfect, uh, in theory. But when you're going to test it against the real world, it's, it's just going to fail. I think there are just so many people doing that. So that's definitely some great advice. I think it's definitely important too, to look at real world problems and real use cases. So that's some great advice there. And I appreciate that M goes, but, um, thank you so much for everyone tuning in and listening to episode seven of heading West. And then before we wrap things up, Emma goes, where can anyone find you, get in contact with you and learn more about wallet chat? Um, absolutely. So you can follow my personal Twitter account. It's M underscore goes underscore distance or wallet chat, which is uh, wallet underscore chat, or just go to our website. It's uh, wallet chat dot fun uh, because we like having fun and we think the product should be fun. So, so just go to any of those resources and, um, and yeah, do get in touch. There are, there's also a link to our Discord on the website. So we would love to have you in, in the community. Beautiful. Well, there we go. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone. We will see you on the frontier in the next episode. Mm -hmm.